chefs of Reddit. What is your single favorite ingredient and why? Sumac. Seriously. Get yourself a huge bag for like $15 bucks and thank me later. It's lemony and salty, sweet and smoky and earthy and beautifully red. Sprinkle it on toast, curry, chicken, steak, tacos, deviled eggs, ice cream, just about everything. You can also brew it like tea and it has an intense wild berry flavor. My mom is half Iranian, so we grew up eating sumac with our rice all the time. My parents thought it was hilarious when little me asked for some while at a friend's house. And of course they had never heard of it. Be diligent in asking friends if they are allergic. It can come as a big surprise. I have an uncle who found out he was highly allergic to it when he moved to a new house. There was a large patch of sumac blocking his view of the lake. They are very resilient plants so he decided to burn it. The smoke hit him and he went into anaphylactic shock. One of our visiting relatives happened to be carrying an EP pen which saved his life. It's also not great to eat if you're pregnant. Thoughts on Zata? I bought some on a whim one and it became my favorite addition to roasted veg, poultry, lamb, you name it. It's a mix of sumac, ground sesame seeds and other herbs I can never identify. Zata is amazing. You can have it with olive oil. Dip a small piece of pita bread in olive oil then dip that same piece in a separate bowl with Zata. OBV another bowl from the storage container. For breakfast and thank me later. Bradley only has entered the chat. And he has left the chat. The entire Borna Petty staff has left the chat. Roasted sesame seed oil. It adds a light nuttiness and saltiness to a dish. Use with care though. It's amazing. But it can overtake a dish fast if you use too much. My experience with sesame seed oil is. 1. Use 1 stroke 3 rd of what recipe calls for. 2. Taste nothing but sesame oil in whatever I make. That and almond extract. Always way too overpowering for me. I'm a big fan of KN powder. I throw a pinch in everything to give it a zing. Are you Chef John? Lol. You only need a little bit. Bay leaves. Like salt you don't want them to be the dominant flavor in anything. But they make a night and day difference in stews. Pasta sauce. You name it. Around my house we call it the lucky leaf if you find one in your bowl. Yes. Helps calm the kids down when they find unexpected plant matter in their food. Timestamps count too. Bay leaf in stew is alchemy. I don't know what it tastes like specifically. But if you skip it. The dish is sucky. I just got fresh bay leaves online. Not the odorless stuff that comes from the grocery store. It smells similar to gunpowder green tea. It's amazing. They do something. I've never noticed any flavor at all. Have I only come across ones that were too dry? It's fairly common for bay leaves to be sold old and lacking. I started buying them fresh and drying them myself and it made a huge difference. But any good spice purveyor will have bay leaves far better than what you can get in a regular grocery store. Try burlap and barrel or pensies. Chef of 25 years. Personal favorite is Worcestershire sauce. Use it more at home than in restaurants I've worked. Such a nice humor me though. My grandma has a bunch of severe allergies. Well, at least, that's what she tells people. For years, we have speculated that she's just really picky when it comes to food and, instead of admitting it, she just tells everyone that she's allergic to whatever food she doesn't like to eat. The biggest one is seafood. She is deathly allergic to seafood and the type of fish that gives her the worst reaction are anchovies. So, anyways, we're out at the melting pot. Fondue restaurant. One night and they're making us the cheese fondue right at the table in front of us. The chef goes to add a few splashes of Worcestershire sauce and I'm like stop. Sorry, but my grandma is allergic to anchovies so we'll skip the Worcestershire thank you. And my grandma goes I get this all the time. I love Worcestershire sauce and use it all the time. Hehe. <laughs> Busted. I told her that Worcestershire sauce is literally made out of fermented anchovies and she flipped out and denied it. Said there's no way that's possible. And refused to look it up or read the back of a bottle. She still eats it all the time and is still deathly allergic to anchovies. I had no idea that's what it was made from. Till. You know. It's possible she is intolerant of unfermented seafood. But okay with fermented seafood. I have a bunch of intolerances ibs. Thanks a bunch but I find I can eat just about anything with no ill effect if it's fermented. Something about the process stops my guts from wigging out. <laughs> Chef here. Lemon juice. Enhances flavor in almost anything. Vinegar is too dominant for me. Thanks. Acid is delicious. LSD is lovely with any dish. 
vinegar. It is often the thing that is missing when people go for more salt and spices in their cooking wondering why it doesn't taste quite as good as in a restaurant. Can you tell me more on this? I understand vinegar can help break down meat to make a really nice tender stew or ribs. But what else do you use it for? Mostly red sauce type dishes I assume. Do you use white vinegar? Malt? Red wine? It's just a good all purpose acid. Lemon juice, beer, tomatoes and cooking wine serve a similar function, although they have more potential to conflict with or overwhelm the other flavors in the dish. I mostly use apple cider vinegar, since I like to take nips from the bottle while I cook, but malt and red wine will add a little more flavor, which can be good or bad. White is very neural, very cheap, and very strong, and doubles as a handy cleaner. Salt fat acid heat is a cliche, but it's a cliche for good reason. I don't think I've ever made a bad dish that checked those four boxes, especially malt vinegar. Not a chef, but a baker, cardamom. It's still not super common in American baked goods. And while I love cinnamon, that flavor isn't special to my palate anymore. Cardamom gives such a warm, floral scent flavor to whatever you make, and can be paired with so many things. Treat yourself. Add some cardamom and orange zest to your next batch of banana bread. I love when my Indian colleagues bring in sweets because more often than not they have cardamom in them and I love the flavor. Oh h h h I'm Indian and just found out I've been eating cardamom my whole life without even realizing lol. How much cardamom and zest would you add? I have some old bananas and would love to mix it up a bit. Miso paste gotcha jang da ban jiang. All good stuff. Miso paste is insanely good I could eat that shon toast. How is it? Single favorite ingredient. Lists real mayo. Can just have one favorite ingredient for Asian foods tbh. Salt. If there's an objectively correct answer to the question, it's this. Or butter. I found out that French cooking was just different ways to flavor butter. Or garlic. Adobo. Oh. I stopped using those products when they became cloud-based subscriptions. Paprika. That sh makes anything taste better. Hungarians entered the chat. Paprika is love. Paprika is life. A lot of people don't realize it, but it's just red pepper that's dried and powdered. Also, smoked in some cases. Smoked paprika is a huge game changer when it comes to dish. Imo. Smoked paprika is even better. MSG. The flavor enchancer. I use MSG but it gets such a bad rep. It has less sodium than sugar. Not sure if this is a typo, or a hilarious joke. My mom told me that MSG gives her headaches while eating a handful of Doritos. Most surreal experience of my life. No offense to your mom, but people are dumb. Glutamate is in all sorts of stuff, but people only get headaches when it says MSG on the label. Uncle Roger would be so proud of you. Foo I op, 100% agree with you. Everyone uses it but none like to disclose that they do. I was once at a Chinese takeout place with a big sign that said no MSG, but through an open door you could see one of the kitchen staff taking a break sitting on what must have been a 35 gallon drum labeled Daji no Mato. I didn't care. I put MSG on everything. Fun fact, the only place you won't find MSG on the US is on actual Chinese restaurants. Nobody cares to check their Dorito family bags ingredients, which contain MSG. Yep, and glutamate. Your body doesn't care if it's MSG or free glutamate, as the sodium and the glutamate dissociate as soon as it hits saliva, is present naturally in a bunch of stuff too. So it's often in your food without having to be on the ingredient label. The people whining about MSG are the same who would sign a petition to ban dihydrogen monoxide. Dot but god help any Chinese restaurant that gets caught using it. Never mind that it's one of the most, if not the most studied food substances ever, and nobody has ever been able to prove any of the claimed harmful effects. There was one study where a couple of people with self-reported MSG allergies had reactions. They were in the placebo group. Oops. Thyme. Thyme pairs well with meat, tomatoes, and beans. It is the main ingredient in the classic French herb combinations book Hagani and Herbs de Provence. These herb blends are frequently used to flavor meat, stews, and soups. Can't imagine not having time on my side when cooking a wide variety of dishes. Time is great in cocktails as well. Pairs well with acid and sweet. Black garlic. Makes everything 100x better. Most of what I see here is staple pantry items. If you don't have black garlic, get it. 
crush it into a paste and make a compound butter or anything. B-L-A-C-K-G-A-R-L-I-C. Sweet sticky heaven. Gotta have a bet it all on black garlic burger. Pasta water on recipes that use pasta. Jig that sauce G-H-I-C-C. P-O. T-A. Toes. Would you suggest boiling them or sticking them in a stew? Yes. Nutritional yeast. It literally makes everything taste umami funky and I absolutely love it. On popcorn. Slaps block of cheese on table cheese. This is actually a rare shout out for cheese on this thread. So thanks from the cheese community. Soy sauce. Makes for a great base. Good on most savory foods. I'm not a chef. I just cook for fun. Tajin. It's a season that adds a little bit of lime and a little kick to your dish. I put it on almost everything. Garam masala. I find it to be so good in many savory dishes. I replace cumin with it whenever it's called for. It's incredible in chili or any Asian influenced dishes. I had a friend bring me a box. Yes box. From India and I can't go back. The American grocery store's version just doesn't come close. Try looking up any Indian stores near you. They will most definitely have the authentic garam masala powders. Stock stock cubes. They often add a lot of flavor, seasoning and depth. Better than bouillon is the way. Best life hack I ever learned was adding chicken stock cubes to cut potatoes boiling in water. Seriously will up your potato game in ways you can't imagine. I've also done it with rice as well where the rice was going into something else. Salt obviously. But as far as funner items, you'll notice it changes. We go through stages. I've had my jalapeno chip alt stage. My mushroom stage. My chickpea stage. My pancita stage. My favorite was my porchetta stage. I had the stuff on the specials menu in one way or another for so long we had to put it on the permanent menu of Suffer the Wrath of Big Eaters. Beer. I drink 4 or 5 before cooking and my food tastes 10 times better. Not a chef but love cooking. Since people have said salt already, I'm going with garlic. I use garlic a lot. Have you ever tried olive oil? Garlic and red pepper pasta? I love to cook and every single girlfriend I've ever had comes into the kitchen when I first start cooking dinner and goes omg whatever you're making smells so good and without fail it's always just garlic with onion shallots. I could be making the most elaborate dish around and not a peep unless it's about 2 minutes after the garlic onion shallots hit the pan lol. It is such a classic amazing smell though. Whenever a recipe says you need x amount of garlic, I add at least 3x that much. If I was a vampire. I'd stake myself because existing without garlic is not an option. Every online recipe with garlic always lists far too little garlic. Just like how every soup recipe lists far too little stock. And then they all lie about how long the recipe actually takes from start to finish. It's a conspiracy. Poritos. I can spell. Onions. I add onions to almost every dish. Onions are okay but recently I've discovered shallots and like. I knew they existed and everything before but never used them much, and now that I have I use them on everything. Shallots are the star of the onion world and no one can convince me otherwise. They are better in every way. Garlic salt. It is 100% a gateway spice. It starts as a hungry young adult with no culinary knowledge. Your amen all tastes the same. People like to put seasoning in their food, right? Could buy the salt and pepper. But wait, this is garlic salt? Hectometers. Maybe it'll taste a little better. Throw it in the cart. Damn. These cheap ramen noodles are great with the garlic salt and a bit of pepper. What else do people put in ramen? Celery. Go buy some. Some sriracha? No idea how to pronounce this. Throw it in. An egg? Shoot. Was planning on letting those rot. There are other ingredients too. Hamburger helper? Wait. I could make this cheaper by purchasing the ingredients separately. HMM. Five years later you're cooking from scratch. If it exists, you can cook it. Garlic salt is a gateway spice. Heavy cream. Heavy cream in my coffee. Scrambled eggs. And mashed potatoes. One year. For Thanksgiving. My dad was making mashed potatoes and he ran out of milk halfway through the recipe. No big. He thought and he added a little pour of vanilla coffee creamer to make up the difference. Well, it was enchanting. Just such a mysteriously wonderful flavor that we couldn't stop talking about. Fast forward to the next year when my dad had a big surprise for us at Thanksgiving dinner. We all sat down and scooped up portions of all the traditional dishes. 
mashed potatoes and gravy, green bean casserole. He eagerly watched us all take our first bites and then we all let out a communal gag. He had fully replaced all of the milk with vanilla crema. By far the worst thing I have eaten in my life. Oranges. They are just amazing. Do you enjoy lemon in your sauce? Orange is better. Fill your fish with baked oranges. Will blow your mouth away. Hibiscus tea. Someone, put orange and ginger. The most refreshing tea ever made. Chicken with orange and wine reduction. Beautiful. I'm going to start off by saying basic seasoning. Herbs and spices don't really count. So that rules out salt, pepper, cumin, paprika, and basil, which are all big favorites of mine. My answer for a big A ingredient that you can sink your teeth into is spring onions and similar grassy onions. Reason being they have a profound effect on any dish they are included in. They look beautiful in white, green and both. Are super versatile, forgiving to cook with, caramelize beautifully, and work well in dishes from so many cultures and geographic regions. I've got a particularly good honey beef recipe that I make with spring onions, homegrown chilies, and basil. For a strange but satisfying Euro-Asian fusion kind of deal. Vietnamese fish sauce. Different from Thai fish sauce. I've been working in kitchen for 10 years. Mostly Italian kitchen and Aussie steakhouse. But my most favorite ingredient is always Vietnamese fish sauce. For my foods only. It contains salt, seafood and umami flavor and I don't have to use MSG. I tried Thai fish sauce but the smell was quite strong. And the flavor wasn't good. The second favorite ingredient is white wine. Some chefs like to add a dash of lemon or lime juice to their foods. Western foods. But I think white wine works better.